So this is part two of uh, our conversation with uh, Dr. Hopolang Matia as we are going through her th uh, thesis, which focuses on something that most people will overlook. And because just generally the hype is about absent dads, this, absent dad, this. But she was like, no, bro, let's explore black South African men experiences of attempting to reconnect with their previously estranged children after having been absent from their lives. Now, if you missed part one, can you please not watch part two? Because you'll be out of sync. You'll be catching strays. Before we even start with part two, there's one thing that dudes are missing out on in terms of being there mm. when their baby arrives. And like, because this child is here now. Mm. What is that one thing that like you forgot to mention in, in part one that you want to start part two with? Their own healing. Yeah. Their own healing for their own story, for their own lineage, for their own future, yeah. for their future kids. Some of these dads had more than one child, want more kids. Um, and just breaking patterns and the cycle because it didn't start with them. Many black men who become absent. So, for example, if... I may use your example. Mm -hmm. Your mom mm -hmm. was absent, mm -hmm. right? Dad was there. But if you were to become an absent dad, it didn't start with you. It started with mom mm -hmm. in some capacity. Mm -hmm. So it didn't start with you. But by you then being there and repairing and you healing mom, mom's going to heal her mom and dad. And your daughter's kids if she chooses to have or even vicariously cousins you you're healing the lineage so you're missing out on that and we all got a part to play and the roles that we play matter no matter how small no matter how insignificant you might feel at that um another objective that you had and this is why this is part two <laughs> You wanted to understand the psychic defenses used by fathers and how they position themselves concerning societal discourses on absent and present fatherhood. Now, when you put this, or, or how I just read it, for me, I was like, mm, this one speaks about accountability. Mm -hmm. This one speaks about honesty. Mm -hmm. This one speaks about vulnerability. But we can have them in different compartments, mm -hmm. right? Accountability, honesty, vulnerability. The most important thing or the underlying thing that holds all of these things true to what they are is a safe foundation, safe environment, safety. Mm -hmm. I don't know about how they like this to safety first. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. These things do not happen without the absent father feeling safe. Without the, the, the kid who's reconnecting with their absent father, without feeling safe. Mm. How do you think you achieved creating that environment for these fathers before we talk about their journeys mm. in the thesis? You know, I put on shades because half the time the lights are blinding. But I'm going to tell you something exciting. Dreamstream.co.za is the plug for exclusive content, ad-free content. And if you are looking to record a podcast, video content, or record your album, check them out. And if you don't, man, we'll never know if you got the talent. Go to dreamstream.co.za. My name is Smash Africa, and I co-sign this message. I think by normalizing the conversation and letting them lead the okay. conversation. So by me just coming in as an observer, even though I'm an expert, I made it very clear, I'm an expert in human psych psychology. I'm not an expert in your life. That's always my stunt as a pr professional because you live your life. What we're going to do is co-create this journey or walk, walk this journey and I'm going to learn. I'm going to listen to you and 
where I am an expert, I'm going to offer suggestions and recommendations. And then I'm also going to empower you to use your agency to choose which ones you're going to want to take mm. further. Mm. So I think that empowers a, a, a person to just feel safe enough to say, one, I've got agency and choice. Two, she's not here to judge me. Mm. Very important. Um, I think it's important to say, <laughs> twist of events, when I, when I interviewed these dads, I was pregnant. So I was a trigger from the minute they saw me. They were like, oh my God. Not, Who not, sent you? not only are you a yeah. black woman, you you're are pregnant. pregnant. What do you think of me? And I had to just be upfront about it and say, yes, look, I'm, and I was like far in my prayer. I was round. <laughs> I was so round. Bless up. I couldn't hide it. So I had to say, look, I, I can only imagine. And I, I use those particular words. I can only imagine what it feels like talking to me right now. And I mean it when I say, even though it may not feel that way, and I hope that as this conversation moves forward, you, you settle and it's okay to be nervous. And I owned my, my stance or my experience to say, I am a black woman. I am somebody's daughter. I am pregnant. I do have thoughts and feelings, but this is what I'm wanting us to talk about so that I can understand and hopefully maybe you can understand where perhaps the mother of your child may have come from. I don't know her experience. I don't know her. I don't speak for her, but I can share something about something. Mm. So I think that that calmed them down. Even the dad, you know, in the in the in part one where I said he cried from beginning to end, mm. he felt the safest at the end, actually. And that's yeah. why he contacted me. And also I do, I think like as Buffet too, like as as men, our tears sh should not be associated with weakness. With weakness? No, no I don't want to say that. You just in, in, don't you do that, woman? Don't interrupt a man when the man speak. Our our tears need not be um, looked at like I'm feeling unsafe or I'm feeling challenged. They should just be looked at. I'm emotionally going through something, and the tears are honestly expressing what I am feeling. I may not know how to explain what it, what it is that I'm feeling, whether it's anger, rage, or I'm feeling weak at this point, hopeless and helpless. Because yeah. remember, tears mean yeah. so many things yeah. for so many people. Yeah. So as, as men, when we think about crying, let us not attach our tears to these certain things, but rather say like, after I cried, reflect on what you felt. Yeah. Can I reformulate that? Mm -hmm. I think it's a yes and no. I think, and it, you, you are sort of saying it. I think that, so in the room, I'll say something like, if your tears had words, what would they be telling me? And that's what you're saying, which is don't assume that it only means this. Boom. But it can also mean that you are feeling weak in that moment and creating a safe space for that and that being normal and okay. Yeah. Because when a woman cries, She's also feeling those things. Yeah. And we have safety to say, this is what I'm feeling because society has created those safe spaces for us. So let those tears fall, man. So, so let them fall. Let those tears fall. Stop yeah. chasing waterfalls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, I had to make you laugh at some point in this podcast. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 I mean, like, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be to begin, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, at some point, we need to break. We need to break, you know? Yeah. Um, so now, <clears throat> I, I, I want to go to, uh, you know, the first, uh, the first thing that, that piqued my attention. Psychic defenses. Mm. Let's break that down. Okay. What does it mean? Like, if, if you had to break it down to a layman. And I would say, just go and Google it and find out. Yeah. But like... <laughs> <laughs> As a doctor, you don't have to go in depth, yeah. but just break it down for me. So I'm very mindful of there'll be various people watching this. I don't want to get technical. Please don't. I, I want the layman to understand. Yeah. So I'm going to sound very undoctor like. Please okay, do. So when yeah. my peers watch this, they mustn't judge me. That is your disclaimer, Pierre. <laughs> because they're going to want me to. Why did you not define? Because I want the average South African. Oh, anyone who's watching this from Russia. From Russia mm -hmm. to understand. What's the game? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, psychic defenses are mechanisms or things that happen mentally and emotionally for us 
that are there to protect us from experiences that we cannot tolerate, bear, or feel like we cannot tolerate and bear. It's when your mind protects you from an experience, a thought, an emotion, and a feeling that could make you go over the edge. Sure. Does that make sense? So, so, so yeah. Defense broken down. It's exactly like soccer. Like, yeah. It's that player you put in place for the goal not to go through. Sure. Because if the goal goes through, you may not be able to th- survive the loss that your team has lost. Sure. But now with a loss comes a lesson. Yes. If if you are willing to learn. If and if you have capacity to learn as well. If you are willing to learn you may and be you have willing, capacity. But may not have capacity. You may not have the muscle for it. You may need to build the muscle for it. Like in gym. Capacity, psychological and emotional capacity requires you to build it. You can have no muscle and only have fat, but it doesn't mean you don't you don't have the the opportunity to build muscle. Right? Sure. But we're all going to start at different levels. Where sure. I have muscle mass, you have just only body fat. We're going it's going to take time. Yeah. It's and it's gonna take a different diet and it's gonna take different supplements. And for me, I might get there easier or I might be able to tolerate certain feelings and experiences. So and then that means our defenses, our psychic defenses will look different. Damn. So when when and you mentioned that we are we are we have different um psychic defenses mm-hmm. honesty the truth is the truth brah mm-hmm. how can these psychic defenses deny us greatness in being honest with ourselves and where we are because reconnecting with your estranged child mm-hmm. requires honesty and but if you are staunch about your position because you are you you are clear and you want to be defensive and you haven't taken time to unlearn certain things or build the muscle to let go and just mm-hmm. you know how do you encourage a man watching this or someone even a woman who's trying to reconnect with their child being honest with what happened and bearing that truth to their child I'm all about grace in my work ne nah. because also you must remember let me defend the defenses first. We all need psychic defenses. Otherwise, we will psychically die or perish, right? They are there to protect you. So on the opposite side of the spectrum, somebody who had no defenses at all, for me, it's problematic. That's unhealthy as well. There's always something about getting to yourself, yourself healthy place in, in between or in the middle. You needed those psychic defenses to survive so these dads in order for them to be able to eventually in 20 whatever be able to speak to Hopalang about that if they didn't have psychic defenses they wouldn't be able to have the conversation with me for example you mentioned here there are negative narratives and stereotypes around and this is how it reads other negative uh, other negative narratives and stereotypes that fathers felt shadowed black fatherhood was the opinion that black men are incapable of meeting the standards of presence, stability, emotional availability, and financial provision. Yeah. If the world is telling you you can't yeah. do this, you are going to be defensive. Yes, you are. And you're going to deny that you're an absent father, and you're going to suppress that experience, and you're going to um, turn it into something that it's not, and you're going to take victimhood, and you're going to shift flame by the time the world requires you to take accountability um, I've built up all the walls I've built up all the walls because I have to I can't take all that you're telling me I can't do and you telling me who I am and not even equipping me or giving me solutions you're just like pointing fingers like okay I, I okay fine or I'm going to be like where's the wall where's the cement I'm just not hearing it hearing it and that's what we often find with black dads who find themselves in these positions. Accountability. <laughs> <laughs> I think accountability is like the new buzzword for this century. Nah. Yeah. What did that look like in, in your research? Painful. It looked so painful. Um, like I said in part one, it didn't start with them. 
to take accountability, these men had to, for some of them, their dads didn't take accountability. Their moms didn't take accountability. So you're holding the, the, the whole generational trauma accountability on your shoulders and you don't even know where to start because you don't even know what happened to you. You don't understand it. I'm the first person to tell you, I don't want to my dog or I don't want to my dog. Um, and then to say, even though those people messed up and you didn't get here by yourself, and even though South African history messed up and you didn't get here by yourself and about and those things as well, it's still your responsibility to shift for you and your child. That's painful. That's a lot of anger. That's a lot of pain. It's so, it's like, I didn't ask to be born. I was born into these circumstances. So accountability looked very painful. Now, do you think... One can be accountable when they are feeling shameful and they don't feel like they have power. Because I think they can start. And the reason why I'm saying this, because like, you know, other people are watching this and yes. feeling hopeless and yes. feeling shame and they are being triggered. Yes. And we're talking about this accountability. Yes, you you can start the journey of taking accountability, but it's going to require people, places, and things. It's going to require you to be very intentional about where you who you start that journey with, who do you feel safe with. Because if you start with me and I judge you, we're cutting that. We're gonna shut that thing down, right? If you go to places that claim safety but they're not like therapeutic spaces but then you f it doesn't work out or you feel judged or you know it's not the right fit it it, sh it has the potential to shut that down if we don't normalize normal experiences human mis you know or whatever it is some people do it through church whatever your your people places and things are dream stream a place to create yourself Record video, music, and podcasts in our full service studio. Record video, music, and podcasts in our full service studio. Dreamstream, a place to create yourself. I would say you need to be intentional about that because there is a lot of shame. There is a lot of guilt. There is a lot of give and take. It's a dance. Like everybody has to own their stuff yeah. in that story. Yeah. And so if the people, places and things can't hold that and are judgmental or are angry or toxic or are rigid, there's going to be a breakdown. So, essentially, in order for these dads to embark on this journey, they needed to get to a place where they're comfortable with being vulnerable. Where they are comfortable with even accepting that they're absent, even if they didn't want to be absent. A lot of the dads that I interviewed, it took time for them to even accept the terminology of being absent dad. They couldn't even understand that in my thesis, I'm going to refer to you as being an absent father. Like the one the one guy I remember fought me for an it took so long to transcribe that that <laughs> that interview because he was like, I'm not an absent dad. I'm like you are. And I had to define for my thesis what it means to be an absent father. And in general psychological terms, what do we mean by absent father? And at the end of that conversation, it was going black and white to say, are you here? Are you performing in this area? Are you performing in this area? Are you perform That's an absent dad. So radical acceptance of, or partially, or partial, some of them it was partial absence. Like the dads, the two dads that reconnected at some point had a story of partial absence. You have to accept that you're partially absent. Because if you are financially present, but physically absent, if you are physically present, but emotionally unavailable, uh, unavailable, you are partially absent. So to reckon with that term, at, uh, that's where you start. Um, in your thesis, as you, you know, summarize your findings, you say a number of personal factors also complicated reconnection with their children. 
And these often determine the positions that these fathers took up in relation to the, to the social factors. What appeared to keep some of these men stuck in their absent father identities was difficulty, difficulty taking accountability for the consequences of their actions due to defensive processes and mentalizing deficits. This, these defensive processes served to manage shame at feeling like they had failed, shame at having been rejected, and shame at having become a stereotype of the black fatherhood. The reason why I'm reading this, I want you to convince someone who's watching this. <laughs> so much pressure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I want you to convince someone watching this. They're watching this from a lens of like, my parent was absent. Mm. Why should I give that person a chance? I haven't healed. Or maybe they are that absent parent. Mm. Why should I be given a shot at reconnecting? And lastly, because there's always another parent. Mm. Mm. Why should I give that person grace? You see how I've made it three? <laughs> it's a three-part question. Mm. And because you're a doctor, I know. <laughs> the stage is yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this question, these, this three-part question makes me nervous because I feel like this is, I need to be careful with my words because it can trigger a lot of people. I can what I say can be misconstrued or come off as insensitive or hey, they can come for me. Let me prioritize so, my, my okay. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note, give yourself the opportunity to deserve the option. So the first one was the, the guy who, 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 who's absent, right? Give yourself the option to deserve healing and doing something different for yourself because you deserve it. No. And I know that that guy is sitting at home and he he doesn't feel like he deserves the chance. He doesn't feel worthy of being a father. And you may not be, but give yourself the option to be worthy. If you are reflecting with yourself and you genuinely can say, I don't deserve it because I've done this, I've done this, I've done this and you're right, Give yourself the option to deserve it. If you feel like you do deserve it and it's other things that have kept you from being able to access that child, give you your child and the mother of your child and your lineage and just your little community the option of shifting that because that child deserves it. But so does the mother of your child. She's struggling. No, no, no woman conceives and says I want to be a single parent right if that wasn't the initial plan so let me be careful about how I phrase this there are women who say I want to fall pregnant I don't want the guy involved they go to the sperm bank or they ask you smash but I don't want you I'm, I'm not having that conversation I'm saying the woman who conceived with the intention and purpose that they wanted to co-raise this with somebody else married or not they wanted somebody there for the journey. That person also deserves you to be part of f shifting that and fixing that. Because she, it's not fair. She's, she's, she, she deserves the parenthood that she envisioned if it's possible to achieve it. You know, if she still wants it, if she still wants a co-parent um, and, a, and a, yeah, and a support structure that looks a particular way. What was the second one? The child. The child will always who, deserve it. Who, yeah, the child who is like, yeah, why, why should I give this man a shot at reconnecting? Because we've, we've... Because whether you know it or not is going to show up unconsciously. Just and because I, you don't, I like that. Just it's because so, you so don't know there. that it's showing up unconsciously doesn't mean that it's not happening. I have so many clients. I have so many friends. I have a personal experience where you're like, I can't miss something I didn't know I have, and it projects all over the place, and then you only realize it after. Your future deserve you deserve it. You deserve to not walk around with unknown wounds or known wounds you deserve the answers you deserve the agency to choose consciously choose that person to be there or not 
you deserve to not repeat patterns. You deserve, if you choose to have a family, to not repeat those patterns. And this I stand on because I studied it. You will unconsciously do it. Damn. Repetition compulsion. Google it. It's a thing. It's not a hopelang thing. And lastly, to the other parent, what role can they play in making sure that this reconnection, I'm not saying it's going to be seamless. Because Re sometimes... Re sometimes rephrase your question. No, no. So sometimes, some pe sometimes people have still feel pain that you left yeah. you. Like you left me hanging. It's so We're supposed to do this together. Yeah. And then one day you just decided out. Yeah. And now you want to come back. Yeah. What do you say to that mother? Like who's got that kind of, they haven't dealt with it. Yeah. Right. And or other situations where like the inconsistency of you yeah. affected my relationship and how this child was brought up. Do you know what that woman deserves? Health. That's what I would say to that woman. You deserve health. And health doesn't mean that you are solely responsible for fixing this thing. Health doesn't mean that if you choose to forgive this person, you are saying what they did was right. Health doesn't mean that if you don't go down this path, your child um, is doomed. No. It just means that you must be aware that you're choosing something that you didn't have to choose. Crazy, right? It doesn't have to be that way. And that takes a lot from, I'm being very careful with my words, that, and it's not all on you. And some women will find themselves doing the best that they can to facilitate that reconnection and the guy have hardly. Yeah. And that's also okay. And once you have exhausted all the healthy options to say, I tried, okay. And then also not into, you deserve it because you also don't want to internalize you as the problem. But you also deserve health looking like you being accountable. Okay. Mm. This is a difficult one. And I hope it's not misconstrued or misinterpreted. We, you, you're not passive in your life even if the other person is in the wrong. So what I mean by that, and when I say it even therapeutically, I always say for you to make space and room for a toxic person to come into your life, that's your portion to work on so that you no longer ever make space for those kinds of people to come into your life ever again because you deserve different. Yeah. Did you hear what I said? I hope I hope you heard it because then they'll hear it. <laughs> okay, so as 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 a mom, let me personalize it. As as a mom, the person I chose to have a baby with, no matter whatever poor dresses they made, that's their stuff. My portion is doing the work on me to understand what is it about me, Hopalang that that person had space in my life to begin with. And that is the most painful thing. And you deserve that because if at this age, then you're doing that work, the rest of your life looks so much different, Smash. And not only romantically, it looks different for your child. It looks different for your next relationship. If you want to, it looks so different for your relationship with your spirituality. It looks so different for your friends, your family. Like it, your life, your career, everything just looks different. So you're doing it for that. But also your child, you I can't disconnect it from your child. Your child deserves that. And they didn't ask to be on this, on this earth. You two did something that brought them here. So it takes two of you to take that accountability. And if you're not at the point where you guys are ready to do that together, at least start them those processes separately somewhere. Mm. Church, therapy, uh, mentors, you know, podcasts, listen, read, sit with yourself, journal, call me. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Opalang, thank you so much for your time. Thank, Thank you. you so much for your contribution. And um, I look forward to seeing people participate in the comments so that we can 
host that uh, panel discussion before you go back to the UAE. Yeah. Um, and as the name of this podcast, sometimes, you know, you, we, we name things, right? And I remember like this concept of leaving it better than I found it. It was speaking purely on the kids. Yeah. If I am fortunate enough and blessed enough to have a baby, mm. I need to make sure that I leave that child's life better than how I found my life. Yeah. Because I also did not choose to be here. Yeah. And I'm doing anything and everything in my power in le- in 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 doing in doing that, leaving it better than I found it. So I feel by starting this conversation, you were definitely uh leaving it better than you found it. Mm-hmm. By deciding to embark on this research that you took you so many years to do was also speaking maybe to your purpose, mm-hmm. you know, as to why you had to be pregnant at that time and talking about reconnecting with that. I don't even know what was happening personally in your life. Yeah. But this conversation is 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 not necessarily about saying to the world, this is what happened to me personally. I'm pissed. It's more uh, of saying we are all going through it. Yeah. But we can all go through it and overcome it and leave it better than we find it. I appreciate you. And uh, I'm wishing you all the best and more babies, more money, yes, um, but the other one. more love. Yes. You don't want more babies? <laughs> uh, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, just more, man. Because once you get more, your cup is overflowing, it spills over into other people's lives. And, and so it may be. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for watching this episode. Uh, it's been a great privilege to be a part of this conversation. I was triggered. I wanted to cry. I even used my psychic defensive ways of <laughs> cracking jokes unnecessarily. We would. Till the next episode, make sure you subscribe, comment, and like, and share all the awesome content that you get from this. This wouldn't have been possible without the good folks from dreamstream.co.za. Make sure you check out www.dreamstream.co.za. And I also think like dreamstream.co.za, why, why is it such a tongue twister? <laughs> For more exclusive content, ad free content, go to the website dreamstream.co.za. Oh, I need to slow it down. That's how it doesn't twist my tongue. See what I did there? Till the next episode. Down go. We're gonna, we're gonna.